Satnam, Aman Devi here offering a general reading as always explore what resonates within and trust your own experience over anything I have to say. Let this be a kind reminder of your strength and encourage you to continue with courage and tenacity on your soul journey. It feels like I want to ask you how is the divine showing you exactly who you are and now in this wave of consciousness in this portal that's opening up you're able to see exactly how things are lining up and it's in a way that i think sometimes we think on the spiritual path things line up and open up to this place of freedom within a specific mindset of what we believe freedom to be and freedom is the right to choose the right to say yes or no think free will um, think of your sovereignty and in the process of learning what that is for you and by choosing the divine path sometimes you're pushed into situations or led into situations to elevate and that sense of elevating isn't quite as beautiful as we think it's more of like cleaning house than it is like knight in shining armor energy is for you internally to discover rather than externally fixate so the material realm if we could think of it less of like battlegrounds and more of like a game board okay so if you're in that two pentacles we're in that two pentacles where part of you is in that matrix in the web of life and then another part of you is here on planet earth doing your due diligence how can you navigate with love how can you continue to forgive when you are called into service to shed light on things that need to be illuminated and in that process of illumination there might feel like there's pains and pitfalls because you are a cleaning house for the divine as you are called in to service at the soul level and that's what you signed up for in this incarnation and this whole wave of consciousness that's flowing in the doors that are opening up for you and last night i was I was thinking about windows, like windows of opportunity, right? Um, and in the process of, process of contemplating that windows of opportunity, it was more like the divine showing you who you are. And sometimes the human aspect of self can only see so much of themselves without being, without regressing back into fear. Like if we knew it all, where would we be, right? And so they're only showing parts of us. When I was just talking to my daughter about this because I was contemplating it, she so delightfully called me this morning. Um, when I was working in uh, in a home at night, you close the blinds. You close the blinds at night so that the reflection doesn't create fear. Uh, with the specific population I was working with, right? Their their reflection could frighten them and, in a sense, trigger them. Um, and so how is your, your own reflection of strength frightening you? Because you actually are not a victim. You are a co-creator with the divine. You are, or you are one with them. You are not at the mercy, like... It's somewhere between a feather in the wind and the wings flapping. You are part of all of that. And so going with the flow as divinely guided and remaining open and loving in the process, being willing to deliver tough love if you need, and integrating the downloads you receive and the awareness that coming home within. And it feels like forgiving along the way. And I feel like if you're listening to this, you're already on that level of awareness that forgiveness is key for you to continue because all it is is that it is the magic that love that you bring in is the magic because the fear that madness that you bring in on the flip side of love is like poison to the body and it cuts us off from the soul right and so how can you integrate this 
human being with a soul self as I want to give the word impermanence, but it's like, I mean, in short, letting higher consciousness lead. Let's let the, the cards talk. <laughs> it feels like giving some insights on the physical right now. And the word flip side is coming out. You know, this deck is one of those. Okay, so we're going to flip this deck around a little bit. I don't always do that because... Um, I don't always read reversals. It's not that I'm against it. I take it into consideration. What am I doing here? <laughs> Clearly, I don't always flip my decks. Um, it's all within a context because I think sometimes people are like, <gasps> blockage. No, it's opportunity, right? I really, none of my readings talk about this. I met somebody when we were discussing uh, spirituality and the heart, and he used the word clean heart. And I love that because how often we talk about the chakras are imbalanced, the chakras are blocked. It's like clean heart. You just got the clean house. It's due diligence. Like every day you do your laundry, you brush your teeth. You know, there's spiritual self care and maintaining a level of spiritual awareness. Look at me making a mess. Clean it up. Touch it. It this comes from someone else who didn't speak English very well, and he didn't say that's it. I feel like that's it. Mm. How has the world made fun at your expense because of your difference? And rather than now seeing yourself ashamed from that indifference, you're now embracing it and asked to like plant seeds on this earthly plane with you as you now illuminating who you are and opening up to that. Uh, lilies, I almost bought lilies the other day. Um, there's also rosemary in here. I feel like these are kind of my essentials <laughs> right here, sharing with you. Rosemary, rose, rose quartz, and selenite. I mean, there's more. I have a ton of crystals, but let's see what we have. Setbacks. Okay, this makes sense. This makes total sense. What feels like a setback sometimes is a redirection or actually is the path you are guided to take. Like I still have a scar for my band-aid from going to the doctors. Um, and so there is an impermanence with it all. You might feel like it's not happening for you. It might be happening in a different way than you anticipated as part of your soul spiritual development right it's a lesson it's a process a learning to go with the flow a learning to listen from the heart rather than dictate for through the mind a way to navigate from the soul compass no different than when we look up and rise up through the stars at night and how can you be so fiercely devoted and fearless to who you came to be on this earthly plane that setbacks are no longer baffling or um set you back do you think like frog in a well where you feel like oh i have to reach this level i have to do x y and z i have to how many times i don't know anybody in the workplace and you're like oh today i'm gonna get x y z done next thing you know you get this phone call that phone call this pops up in your email box and you're like I didn't get anything done that I anticipated because all these other things happen. It is what it is. And just starting to see the cycle of all things and the impermanence of it all. And breaking free of the mentality that the mind is in control and trust what the soul is delivering. Trust what the divine is delivering for and through you. Conviction. Will you trust? Will you trust you? Will you trust your guides? Will you trust love? You have. The word fearless was really coming through. And it's like living fearlessly, courageously with heart. Um, I think I only think of the word courage with the word with Brene Brown. And she gives the words living from the whole heart, wholeheartedly. Right. And so it's like that. The, the chakra open to receive 
and trusting that you are doing your work. And we do talk about, this isn't like blind faith. We're talking about integrity. We're talking about choice and change. The guided from the heart and soul, not from the mind's eye or the mind's perception of things. <laughs> Alright, I got the Bob Ross deck. Um, this to me just speaks to co-creation, right? And I love listening to husbands, you know, whether it's to, you know, happy trees or happy squirrels. And so you are co-creating with the divine. It is a dance. It is a push-pull. When I say push-pull, it's not, I don't mean that twin flame bullshit. It's more of like, I'm thinking of the way a push and pull paint to where you let it blend in and move it around right it's it's magic and you just let it flow through you in order to paint you have to see differently in order to in order to draw or to adjust the lens of the camera to create the, that image that says it all and nothing at all i say nothing at all because uh, you know a work of art a moment in time sometimes it's beyond words right much is clear. My daughter was home. She'd always be like, Mom, you don't make any sense. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you, darling. It was like when she was five. I shouldn't have taken that to heart. Okay, so what have you taken to heart that has blinded you from the truth of who you are? Now those blinders are coming off and the divine is showing you. Now I'm seeing horses, you know, like in St. Mary's County where they have the blinders on either side of their eyes and it's there's a certain amount that the divine keeps from you so that you can continue. Because if you knew it all, they are protecting you more than you realize. Because all you're seeing is the setbacks. You don't realize the why behind it, right? It's like a parent doesn't tell their kid everything that's happening. You do your best to protect your child. Aimless. Do you feel aimlessly wandering... Now, if, if we think about a seed that's planted in the soil, does it not trust that the water, the rain will come? Does it not trust that the sun will rise? Does it not trust the nutrients of the soil, right? Does that seed question its reality? Humans question their reality all the time, and perhaps you're not as aimless as you feel. The sex, setbacks are part of the path. Okay, and the next word here is procrastination. That actually came up. Um, okay. How are you holding yourself back from who you are? How are you holding yourself back? Think about it. And what do you need to see to believe? You are self-governing. Think sovereignty. And perhaps you, and let's flip this over, you experienced exploitation in the past for your gifts. And perhaps that's not going to happen. And perhaps you'll be supported as you take initiative. And maybe the divine is waiting for your lead when you're waiting for their lead. Oh, wow. Didn't you know you could move mountains? You could do anything. And what if all the energies around you and all the humans put in your path are there supporting you along your way to push you in the right direction, to guide you exactly where you are destined to be? <sighs> Smile. Smile from the heart. Smile from the heart. And there's a perception of reality. You know, if you've listened to <clears throat> other readings, it's like you can take a work of art and go in any direction. We can take any of these cards and go in any direction. We can take any signs, sign or synchronicity and go in any direction. But what direction do you want to go in? What state of being, what intention do you want to bring to the way you see life? grab the book for this one. I normally don't take a look at the book, but for some reason, 
that's probably that. What I might do is, is show it to you and let you screenshot it. Perhaps we'll see. Let's see what comes up. I really believe if you practice enough, you could paint the Mona Lisa with a two inch brush. Like it's going to take time, but you can build your foundation. You can have your prosperity. You can have your pot at the end of the rainbow. 16, star center seven, becoming a master of your craft. 17 to eight, infinite wisdom, dimensions, working in other dimensions. Okay, so, so let's look in the book. 16, 17, this deck has been, this deck has been shuffled plenty of times. This isn't a new deck. So to see the progression of that, seven to eight, mastering your craft to now being in the realm, um, that's huge. And notice there's two there, right? And so how are you mirroring, learning, and teaching? Okay, think of that reflection. And then one of the recent readings talked about grid lines or grids. So making sure that you're in alignment. Uh, forgiveness is coming up again. Okay, star centers. Um, so possible astral travel. I'm just going to show this to you. You can screenshot that. And seven. Uh, the portals are now being opened up to you. Okay. Good. This comes from the Pleiadian Oracle. It's one of listening. Uh, Frida Kahlo's energy comes to mind because she often depicted herself with either a monkey or a parrot, right? So it's a matter of listening, translating, listening, being of service, but also calling back. Uh, the call and response is also coming to mind. Uh, so kirtans, sometimes you're on your own flow or it's a call and response. So knowing when to speak up, and knowing when to listen, knowing when you are the mirror or, the, or when you're putting your image out there. Does that make sense? Wholeheartedly. Show this to you again, this uh, forest is standing out. You are a part of all things and all things are you. All right, I do hope this served well, sending lots of love your way.